Hi everyone, welcome back. In today's session, we are going to talk about Amazon RDS and we will be seeing how we can create AWS using the AWS Management Console. So let's get started. Amazon RDS. So in today's agenda, we will be going to talk about what is AWS. We will be also understanding some brief introduction on RDS. We will be seeing the types of RDS. We will also be checking on the features of RDS and we will be seeing a hands-on. So what is AWS? AWS stands for Amazon Web Service. It is a comprehensive cloud computing platform offered by Amazon. AWS provides a wide range of cloud-based services that enables business and individuals to build and deploy application and manage their IT infrastructure. Some of the popular services offered by AWS are EC2, it's a, it's a compute service, S3, it is a storage service, VPC is a network service, RDS is a database service, Lambda is a cloud function service and many more other services also. There are a wide range of services offered by AWS. The AWS platform has become popular due to its scalability, reliability and flexibility plus including the security also allowing businesses to leverage cloud computing power without the need for significant upfront investment in their infrastructure. So this is all about the brief introduction of AWS. It's a cloud service provider and we count on the scalability, reliability, flexibility, operational overhead and the security offered by the AWS. It has a lot many types of services it offers like EC2, S3, VPC, RDS, uh, EBS volumes, many more services are there, machine learning services, AI based services also. Depending on our business requirement, we can go and select the services we need and configure the system likewise. And it also offers businesses to leverage cloud computing power without needing to significantly invest on the upfront cost. So you don't have to pay any upfront charges. There is no advanced cost that is allocated while provisioning resources into AWS. You can just directly go create a free tier account or if you have already an account, you can provision resources into AWS and there will be no upfront costs also associated with it. You will be only paying for the amount of services and amount of data you have stored into the AWS, the into the amount of period. This is all about it. AWS also follows the pay as you go model. So you don't have to pay any upfront cost also into the AWS account. Moving ahead, we would be understanding today about RDS. So Amazon RDS basically stands for Relational Database Service. It is a web-based service that makes it easier for us to set up, operate and scale a relational database into the AWS cloud. It provides a cost efficient, resizable capacity for an industry standard relational database and manage common database administration tasks. So we can create RDS instances in AWS and configure our database engine using it. And it offers us to scale resize to configure our databases in such a way that we would be having the industry standard relational database and we would be able to perform the common database administration task also. It pro provides managed database solution supporting various database engines such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server as well and many other more. So RDS is basically a managed service offered by AWS and since it is a managed service, so so many other uh, things like operational overhead, the security, the high availability, all these features can be automatically integrated with AWS and we have to worry less about the management of the database and it also supports many more various type of database engines like MySQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server as well. Now we would be understanding about types of RDS. So Amazon RDS for MySQL, it provides a managed MySQL database service that is compatible with the MySQL database engine. It offers features like automated backups, automated software patching and scaling capabilities. Amazon RDS for PostgreSQL. This is a managed PostgreSQL database service that provides compatibility with the PostgreSQL 
Postgres SQL database engine. It offers similar features as the MySQL RDS, including automated backups and scaling options. Now coming to Amazon RDS for Oracle. So it is a managed Oracle database service that allow user to run Oracle database in the cloud. It provides features like automated backups, automated software patching and high availability. Moving ahead, we can count on so many more types of RDS. Amazon RDS for MariaDB. It is a managed MariaDB database service that offers compatibility with the MariaDB database engine. It provides similar features to other RDS offerings, including automated backups and scaling options. Amazon RDS for Aurora. Aurora is a MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible relational database built for the cloud. It is a high performance, fully managed database service with features like automated scaling, fault tolerance and automated backups. They, these are the main types of RDS databases offered by AWS. Each type provides a managed environment for the respective database engine, reducing the operational burden of managing and scaling databases while offering high availability, durability, security, fault tolerance, and automatic scaling with automatic backups also. So coming to the features of RDS, we can count on lower administrator burden as in like when we go for AWS managed services, we tend to reduce the administrator burdens and operational overhead also. It is an easy to use service. Hence, so many official AWS documents and guides are also available that helps us to understand how we can seamlessly use RDS and how seamlessly it can be integrated with other AWS services also performance so rds gives us high availability and high performance as well as we have already counted on scalability also we offer so we get a offer we get an option of scalability with push button compute scaling it offers us a feature of availability and durability as well it offers us a feature of automatic backups and high security also Encryption and REST and in transit is also available. We can encrypt our data stored in RDS instances at REST also and in transit also. Manageability, we can easily manage RDS instance with less administrative activities and less operational overhead also. Monitoring and metrics. So it is an AWS service and fully managed AWS database service. And it can be seamlessly integrated with CloudWatch and other open source monitoring tools also so that we can configure monitoring and metrics and get all the logs to the CloudWatch and other areas. Cost effectiveness, it is a cost effective feature and it is a cost effective service offered by AWS. Pay only for what you use. So as we always consider, there is no upfront cost to use any of the AWS service. Hence, here also you don't have to pay any upfront cost and you only pay for whatever duration you use the database instance. This is something more I would like to count on like Amazon RDS versus Amazon EC2. So a lot many times I have heard of a question like we can configure databases in EC2 instances. I agree on the point. So EC2 instance, if you know, it's a compute service provided by AWS. And Amazon RDS, it's a database service provided by AWS. Since Amazon EC2 is a compute service, there also we can configure, install, and everything can be done using the databases also. Like we can install MySQL client. We can inst install MariaDB database also into EC2 instances. But the things are like the management of those standalone databases servers are very high. And you cannot count on AWS for certain things like availability, security and other features also. So this is something that we would definitely consider before, you know, provisioning any database server into AWS and why we should be using RDS over EC2 instance. So these are some of the features like ap application optimization. So this is something we can, the customer only count on, like how you are going to configure your application and how your application is going to use a particular database. That's totally up to you. Either you use 
use EC2 instance or you use RDS instance. Coming to scaling capabilities, when you use AC2 instances for databases, the scaling is depends on you. Like you have to manage a customer or client has to manage all the operations related to scaling. But when we create RDS instances, we have automatic scaling and automatic backup features also that helps us to reduce the operational overhead and makes us less worry about the scalability of the database instance. We also have an option of read replicas and multi-AZ databases also that helps us to give high availability as well. So coming to the next feature that is high availability, we have just now discussed like when we consider EC2 instance for our database, we have the customer has to manage the high availability part. Okay. And when we use RDS instance, high availability is also managed by AWS. You can use multi-AZ database instance also. And when we count on databases backups, so if you use EC2 instances, customer has to carry the backups and regular snapshots of the EC2 instances. Rather, being into using the RDS instances, we can cons consider this service as it will be managed by AWS only. Database software patching is again one feature that customer has to manage while using EC2 instance for database. And if we use RDS instance, AWS will be taking care of it. Similarly, database software install. Here, customer has to manage in case of EC2 instances and in case of RDS instances, AWS will be managing it. OS patching, similarly, customer will be managing it in case of EC2 instances and in case of RDS instances, AWS will be managing. Coming to this software maintenance and hardware lifecycle, this is something that is run by the backend of the AWS. So it will be taken care by AWS in both the environment. So, seeing all these features, we can consider RDS instance over EC2 instance because every other feature like app scaling, high availability, database backups, database software patching, software installs, and OS patchings also, these are some of the most burden and highly time-taking tasks that if we do it with ourselves, it would cost us so much of time and so much of operational overhead also. And comp comp compiling all these features into one that can be managed by AWS, it's really a relief. And we have to worry less about our uh, all these things like scaling, availability, backups and everything. And we can directly focus on our application and optimize our application and how it is accessing the database. So this is what we can count on while configuring RDS instances over EC2 instances. So now let's get our hands dirty and we will we'll be doing a hands-on session now and we will be seeing how we can create an RDS instance into AWS. So let's log into the console. So here we are into our AWS management console and here we see this is the console dashboard and the home page. And here we see in the recently visited services, I see RDS. If you don't find it here, you can go to the search bar given here and search for RDS. It's a managed relational database service offered by AWS. We'll click on it. And here we are into the AWS RDS. And here is some of the menu given here that we can discuss in the later sections. And here in the databases we see we don't have any databases for now okay so let's create a database and see how it works so first of all we can create on create database and here we have some basic configuration and options that is required to be selected while creating a database so we will be going with the option of standard create and database engine for now we are using my SQL. As you all know, MySQL is the most popular open source database and it's MySQL on RDS also offers a rich feature of MySQL as well. So whatever feature you get with MySQL, same features will be coming with the RDS also. So database engine we are selecting here is MySQL. Here in the version section, I'm keeping it as default and here in the template section, choose a sample template to meet your use cases. So we are not doing it for the production or dev test environment. We are just doing it for the demo purpose. So we, I will be selecting it free tier. Use free tier to develop new application and test existing applications also. So you can choose the option as free tier. So here I have 
mentioned a thing of availability and durability like multi az db cluster we can create these options are currently disabled because we have chosen free tier if we go here with production database okay for high availability and fast and consistent performance we can have all these feature also like multi az multi az db cluster also you can create multiple databases and cluster them together for high performance okay so all these features can be enabled when you go with a production database but we are going with free tier one so that's why these features are disabled for now coming to the settings part db instance identifier so we will be giving as database let's give it as database credential settings we are the master username would be we will be giving as admin and here i will be using a master credential so i have provided the master password and this is my master username and this is my db instance identifier and here we will be give, going into the instance configuration so i am just choosing the default configuration for now the dbt3 micro instance okay that is eligible for the free tier one okay with one vcpu and one gib of memory coming to the storage type we are using general purpose ssd gp2 and here we are using 20 gb of memory you can change it as per your requirement but since we are doing it for just for the demo purpose we will be keeping everything as default and storage auto scaling we can enable storage auto scaling also that helps us to increase the storage after a specific threshold has been increased okay and connectivity if you want to connect this instance with any of the ec2 instance or some of the other things or other aws services you can use this feature also but currently we don't want and here in the vpc networking part i'm giving the default vpc db subnet everything here just make sure uh, as a rule we should not be keeping our database uh, providing databases with public access but since we are doing it for the demo purpose we will be keeping it as a public access we have to provide our database public access so we should be able to log in into it in the vpc where we want to launch these instances so uh, for vpc security group let's create a new security group let's click on create new and my dbsg okay and availability zone we can give ap 1a 1b and 1c also if you want high availability. okay and rds proxy if you want i don't want it for now so i'm not selecting it and database authentication we have to make sure database authentic authentication option is password authentication because we have given the master username and password okay coming to the monitoring part we can enable monitoring also and this will be using cloudwatch monitoring coming to the additional configuration just click on it and here we have to provide the initial database name so my uh, we can provide my db name like this like if you want to provide like demo test or anything you can provide like that and i'm using here my db name if you tend to forget things just make sure you copy this and keep it somewhere so that once you get a chance to log in into this db instance you will be knowing this so my db instance name is my db name the initial name of my database my db name okay and this is everything keeping at this default the backup retention period uh, the number could range between 1 to 35 for how many days you want your backup to stay with you okay so you can you want your backup to stay for zero days if you don't want to keep it or you can keep it from seven days like for one week you want your backup and after that it will get removed or cleaned okay backup window no preference okay if you want backup window also you can choose it backup replication if you want to replicate your backup from one region to another region you can use this feature also and as we have talked about encryption that helps us to keep our data secure and encrypted at rest and while in transit so you can use this feature also this is the aws kms default rds provided key this is a KMS ID. Log exports, if you want to export any type of log like audit logs, error logs. So generally when we work with the production databases, we tend to enable all these features because it is very important to encrypt our data. It is very important to store our logs also somewhere into CloudWatch logs. And then from CloudWatch logs, we can configure those logs to move to S3 buckets also for, you know, uh, keeping the, those logs for 
larger number of days or greater number of days like that okay and it will also you know storing data into s3 buckets also helps us to you know, save some amount on cost also so we can configure cloudwatch logs also but for now i'm not enabling or not choosing any of the logs to export to cloudwatch and this is the i am role that is already been there and this is the auto selected role and this is the maintenance window if you want to select like for production databases we tend to select maintenance windows also like sometimes our application or databases instance goes into maintenance for that particular moment of time we can choose a maintenance window also deletion protection so this is also very important if i select on this and if we, if we try to delete this database instance later it won't get deleted so first of all we have to come to this here edit this database database instance and disable this delete deletion protection so if we try to select this let's select this and we will also see if we can delete this database instance later or not okay so i have enabled delete protection also so i don't want my database to get deleted right away and this is the estimated monthly cost that will be associated with this db instance okay this db instance is costing me this and the storage that we have used the gp2 storage with 20 gb of memory that we have just now used will be costing me 2.62 usd and the db instances would be costing me 18.25 usd okay this is the cost that is associated so uh, we always count on something like i have heard so many students you know mentioning about the cost like rds cost a lot so yes it does but it also comes up with so many a lot of features that when you go with ec2 instances you won't be getting those features and sometimes for production environments and you have a very uh, highly available and applications like e-commerce application or some you know hospital websites where people tend to come a lot and you know interact with your application then it's a good practice to use aws managed services itself like rds instead of going self-hosted self-managed ec2 or standalone databases server so it's always good and this is all about this is a monthly cost that would be associated and since i have my account as a free tier account for now so this rds instance free tier is also available for me for 12 months which is free so it provides me 750 hours of rds in a single az db t2 micro or all this instance type with 20 gb of general purpose storage that is free for 750 hours total it could be for 12 months also and it, it becomes like if you tend to use 750 hours into six months itself so that free tier uh, feature would be over and if you can use it for 12 months also after 12 months if you have only used 600 hours so the rest 150 hours won't be won't get counted and after 12 hours uh, 12 months this free tier account will be over okay so this is all about the basic things that we have covered so far and some minor changes and configuration we have did rest keeping everything as default now we'll create on we'll click on create database so uh, our database is into creating state for now and this might take some time at least three to five minutes or seven minutes so the status is creating here for now this is a database identity file and region in az and the size this is the basic details we have been given here and so let, let's wait for some time and we will be back once the status is ready or active okay so now the database instance is ready and the status says it's available so now let's click on this database instance and understand some more configuration about it so this is the basic summary of this database instance this belongs to class db.t3.micro the az is ap south 1c and this is the connectivity configuration this is the database endpoint we can use this endpoint to connect with this database instance and this is running on port 3306 this is a networking capacity or capabilities that we have already provided and this is the security things and here is the rules that we have given here that my dbsg rule this is the inbound traffic that is coming in the outbound is this one and this is the replication we have not enabled replication also so this is not showing it here and the proxies are also not here so this is all about this database instance and here we have an, an option of modify and actions here if we go here like as we all remember that i have enabled to you know 
uh, enable delete protection. So once if I try to delete this instance, uh, database instance from here, I won't be able to delete it. So let's see uh, if you want to if you want to do some modification, let's click on modify first. And if you want to do some modification here with related to security groups or anything. OK, so you can just uh, mention those changes here like delete protection. And if I disable it, I can delete this uh db instance also so those modifications can be done from here uh, just now i'm not doing any modifications to so clicking on cancel and if i want to see like if i want to see if we can delete this instance while the db de de deletion protection is enabled so if we click on delete and this database has deletion protection option enabled and hence, I don't see any option here to click on delete or confirm the deletion. So this is how it works. If somebody is not having the privilege to delete this or just have the privilege to read onto this instance, you can just enable this option to delete protection. And even you can enable notifications also when somebody tries to delete it or somebody delete this instance, you will get notified also. Okay, so this is all about the feature that can be integrated seamlessly with databases also like SNS topic can be easily integrated for notifications and here we click on action there are so many other options are also available like we can reboot this instance if required if it is not performing well or uh, something like that we can reboot this instance we can create read replica also we can create blue green deployment also we can take a snapshot and restore to point in time recovery if we want to recover the database instance at some at some point like we have done some db updates or some modifications but those modifications are not reflecting for now and we have done some uh you know error error prone modification and we don't require the modifications for now so we can restore the database for a particular time like uh, before 10 minutes or uh, before half an hour what is the db state those states can be recovered also okay and this migrate snapshot is also available create elastic cache cluster also okay so these all things are also available in the action uh, tab here in the drop down we can stop this db instance temporary also if you want to stop it like it is also kind of it cannot be uh, you know stop for 35 days for more than 35 days after 35 days it can be restart automatically so this is how it works and if you want to convert this uh, db instance to multi az deployment you can do that as well also these are quick actions that we can perform onto this db instances or any of the db instances so that's all for today's session now we will be seeing how we can connect with these db instance in the next session and i hope you like this video if you got any queries related to related to this you can mention in the comment section below i will be happy to answer and i'll see you in the next session